Welcome to the channel all about economic board games. Today I'm bringing you a run through of Big Shot. This is an older game. We've got the designer here and it's brought to you by these guys. Now this one plays two to four players. I'd probably recommend playing the max player count on this one. And it's about 45 minutes. So it's quite a quick game. It's lightweight as well. It's area control auction, uh, auctioning and you are entrepreneurs. You're big shots in the 1920s trying to to get real estate and get the most uh, money for the end of the game by spreading your influence in the right places at the right time. You start off with 10 million. You'll have distributed these cubes around the board randomly with, you should have a minimum of two different colours in each one. You'll never have one that's all, say, white in this case. You will then distribute out these companies randomly so you never quite know where you're starting off and you've got different colours and they've got some quirky names and then future credits, Demetrius and cash and partners will be rich and it's all uh, denominations are in millions so there's only me as usual and i'm going to try and play out four players give you a couple of rounds on this one so you will start start player randomly determined maybe roll the dice whoever gets highest let's assume red is going first they roll the dice you'll have distributed this randomly somewhere on the board at the beginning before you'd have uh, distributed the colors so it would have been pure random you then move clockwise so we've got a value of one so you go one you move the dice clockwise to the next player so they uh, that represents that they'll be starting next turn in terms of the roll and it also means for this round these are the opening uh, opening bid these players will make the opening bid so yellow is looking at this lot of four cubes which is kind of influence now the influence cube match the colors of your company so there's there's two influence for yellow and two for red so yellow's thinking right I really want a piece of this. I'm going to bid 2 million. These guys think, you know what, I'm passing. White tries to bid him up maybe, maybe 3 million. Red's like, yep, 4 million. Yellow's thinking, well, I'm not too sure now. I think I'm going to pass. White thinks, right, let's push red to the max, 5 million. Red ends up passing. It's too hot for them, and it's kind of backfired on white. But this is the great part of the game. It, it, it doesn't matter if these cubes aren't your colour. You get to distribute these now. So white pays, what was it, 5 million to the bank. They get to distribute these wherever they want on the board so it can hinder their opponents. Now, looking at the board, you've got so many properties, and they've all got values on them, which is the money you're going to get at the end of the game once you've got the majority of your influence on them you've got some times twos in the corner and they basically multiply the adjacent properties so these three for them and these three for this one here so if you control this one at the end you'd have 11 and if you control this one it'd be times two so 22 if you manage to acquire all three properties that's going to be very lucrative you'll have times two for that times two for that and times two for that so whites then are thinking right where am i going to put these you know what let's just put one over there and we're going to match up the colours, so make a little bit more sense shortly, that. And we that is literally a round. Now, you go to the next player, they roll the dice, six. You go one, two, three, four, five, six. We're over here. Pass the dice. These guys are going to be starting off the auction. There's white and red in the mix here, and they're going to go pass. White's going to go two. Red's going to go three. Pass. Whites are going to go five and reds are gonna go six and whites are gonna pass so six is the winning bid paid out to the bank red players now get to decide so a little bit of payback for white they are gonna maybe put mm, what we got let's go for a white here a white here and reds want to take control of this juicy 18 potentially so black's gonna roll we've got a two uh pass the dice over one two White's bidding on this lot. There's one of each colour there. They're going to bid one. We go two, three, four. White pass. Black's starting to regret having made a bid of four. Everyone else passes. And these guys are getting it for four. Now, if no one wanted to bid on it, then whoever opened the bid, which is kind of why that's there to, to show that, would actually get all four of the cues without paying anything, which was very rare. And who was it? Black. So Black's thinking... Okay, I'm going to go for this 21 up there, and I'm going to put a mixture of these three here. Oh, an even better idea. Watch this one now. So all four cubes, they're going to put all four in there. Now, you're probably thinking, that's madness. Why are you helping out everyone else? But we have 
met the seven cube limit so once there's seven cubes on any of these so seven in this case here you then figure out who's got area control now you'll notice that reds yellows and whites have a tie of two each so they nullify each other they cancel each other out so they're all off the board and that remaining one cube which is black in this case has won it so you put a sold sign under it to show that there's no more auction or distribution of influence on that area and we move on so you can see that the, the power of buying that was was really important and it's spotting these these little strategies and these little power plays as you go throughout the game especially as the variation changes from um game to game as to how these are distributed during the setup we are over to white to roll they get a one pass it over and we're off to this lot here reds are thinking i'm gonna bid two four for yellow pass 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 yellow gets the bid at four that's there and they now get to do something with this lot what have we got then so there's an even tie here and again if black had acquired this it'd have been exactly the same scenario as last time maybe they're gonna put one of their i'm trying to remember who won this auction now completely forgot who won it was it white no i don't think it was white it was red wasn't it no all right i'm gonna assume it was white i've completely forgotten who actually won the bid right let's say white so they're gonna go and put another white there because maybe they really want that one and they're gonna go and dish off a black a yellow over there to cause a bit of competitive trouble for reds and they're gonna go and put this red on that nine there because they know that's a low scoring one this has already gone to black so they certainly don't want to put blacks around here and that's that one over to red to a rolling so they get two these guys are going oh, actually i think it was yellow no it wasn't because they got six bucks oh i can't remember right so yellow is gonna bid now red is probably going to be interested in this one because there's three red there and even though they may not be interested in it, it's to stop opponents distributing those free red cubes to somewhere they don't want them to be because there's only so many cubes in play. And if all your cubes get distributed by opponents, you're going to struggle to get influence to, to, to get these real estate properties. So we are yellow and they're thinking, you know, they're thinking red's going to want this. They're going to bid it. They're going to go four because they know that these guys are going to probably go five, six, Red's thinking, ah, I've only got four money. They're going to take a loan, so you can get loans in this game. Now, they've got 10 million written on them. doesn't mean you get 10 million. It means you have to pay 10 million at the end. The first loan you take is worth 9 million because, in effect, the game is saying you've got to pay your interest off first. So they're going to get 9 million, which means they can continue with the bidding. If, which I probably won't get a chance to do, if you take another loan, on a future round you can only do one per round they're going to get eight million so it's cascading so nine eight seven six so on and so on because you're essentially paying your interest for all your previous loans so they've got the one loan and they oh i can't even remember what the bid was let's say six i think they bid didn't they so let's go yeah when four five six seven million they're going all in uh all the passes so they've all been bidding up the red player because they knew they wanted it seven million to the bank these guys are now in a position to dictate where their influence goes so they could put two here and clinch the win not straight away because there's still only six cubes there but they've took the majority four of the seven it's it's over 50 percent but do they want to do that because yeah, maybe they want to put one there just to sway the the balance of power slightly maybe they're going to go Maybe they could decide to go for the nine, just make the most of, of the influence there. Or, oh, what to do, what to do. Let's go one up there, one here. No, I don't want to do that. One here and one there. Now, it is a slow start to the game, and I'm probably... I'm not going to play the entirety out. I'm, I'm just going to kind of skip ahead now. So this would keep happening. They'd roll the dice, pass it on, so on and so on. This would keep going around. Now, if, for example, it was here and you rolled a three, you wouldn't go one, two, three. You'd literally just skip that empty lot and go one, two, three. So all the lots are going to eventually get uh, auctioned. But let's start adding a few scenarios. So let's say Black's got three here. Well, I've kind of already shown you how they cancel each other out. 
and we had a really good example of that over here didn't we so let's just assume black's managed to get a bit of control there white sofa here and the auction has come to these guys here um, black's done the roll uh, it goes over to so white's opening the bid on here and whites are thinking yeah i'm going to go for this one uh, let's just assume black only had one buck left they're going four these guys no interest in it at all these guys aren't bothered and black they know black is going to have to take a loan to get more money to bid so black so white is 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 looked at this money that's visible you can use some of the advanced rules where well not advanced but alternative rules where you you don't have the money visible which adds another layer to the game and blacks are thinking i need i don't want whites to to distribute my influence but they're going to pass because they don't want the loan but in the game most people are going to get loans because you only start with 10 million so they probably would have taken a loan but what i'm trying to demonstrate is whites won they pay whatever the bid was say five million and they get to place these cubes so these two black they're probably going to want to put straight in there because they've already got control of it anyway you might as well distribute the rest of their influence there because they've won it anyway and it means those two cubes aren't causing hassle elsewhere for for white in this case and white may just go and cause maybe they want to just get the 10 in the bank or just put a few ones around because at the end once all these lots have have been auctioned off if you, you you'll have sold the ones throughout the game that had seven uh, cubes there but at the end you'll literally look at any lots that are left and whoever has the majority you if there's if there's joint ones like here you take them off the board because they've cancelled each other out but if it ended here and black was the only cube they would win the auction with just the one cube so you want to be mindful of where your opponents have maybe sneak one cube on for the power play and so yeah you keep on going you keep getting rid of these you keep distributing them on the board you keep allocating areas based on the seven max count uh, and then at the end you'll figure out if any remainders like this one we said you'll add up the money so this is money the value of the properties you do your multipliers if there was any you add up any money that you've got remaining and then you deduct any money from your loan so you'll have to pay 10 million for each loan even though you might have got less for it whoever has the most money is the winner and that is it folks i love the varied tactical plays in this based on how these cubes come out how much money you've got and you're spotting combinations that people might not have realized was important like for example these two yellows and reds you know you might take them and do that wicked move we did at the top here where you cancelled everyone else out and you were the remaining cube so you've really got to be on your ball and figure out you know which auctions you want to go for and it might not even have necessarily your influence on there and there we are folks if you have to a shorter insight on how this plays check out my overview from last week enjoy